What's going on, people? Welcome to the match preview as we look ahead to the West Ham game on the weekend. Massive game between both sides who are doing okay recently. I know Palace lost the game against Wolves, but you know, West Ham and Palace, we've only lost what one game in the last five. West Ham also on a good streak as well. So it should be an interesting London derby. As always, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to not miss our future video. Joined by T here. T coming off our first defeat under Hudson. How are you feeling? Well, I mean, uh, you know, the honeymoon phase is now over. So now... Yeah, we're not going to win every game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that calculation, we can remove it. 57 points and all of that, that's not going to happen. Yeah, so now it's just a matter of us, you know, um, locking back in, refocusing, and, you know, trying to do what we need to do in order to to, to, to get a good result come this weekend. Because it's going to be a tough match. I mean, West Ham's playing really well. Yeah. So, so what do you think about the Wolves game in terms of, uh, not as a Wolves review, but like the positive negatives out of that game? Uh, what did he like about what some of the, I, th I thought the possession was well that we could take into this game, but the negatives really was individual mistakes. Am I right in saying that? If we remove individual mistakes in a West Ham game and yep. also make some personnel changes that we're going to be talking about, trust me, it's going to be exciting talking about that. Um, do you think we should be fine? Yeah, I mean, it felt, it felt like a little bit of a comedy of errors. Um, you know, a very, very unfortunate on goal situation, and then finding yourself down one nil, trying to chase that goal, and uh, unfortunately having another bad miscue towards the end of the match, which uh, led to a penalty. You know, um, second half they played well. I mean, I, I think we played well. We had a lot more possession, created a lot of good chances. Unfortunately, just didn't get that goal. Um, it's just it's one of those things that you know. Um, to this point, we just I feel like we haven't had a strong enough first half showing um, these past five games uh, the way that we should. Have. I think we have maybe one of them, but uh, Leicester. Yeah, yeah, Leicester. That's it. Apart from Leicester, even though we've had some brilliant results in them run of games, I yeah. agree. We've had some slow starts, which we talked about in previous previews as well. And, and I want to that leads me up to my next question about the approach of the game. Do you expect the Hodgson, especially with some of the players that we're going to be talking about? With a stronger level to approach this game in a in a faster manner. What is it that we start slow with? What do you think the reason is? I, you, you know, I, I just I feel like it, it it could be the fact that we're not necessarily um, trying to play a certain style to open the match. You know, it, I don't know if it's you know kind of like boxing where you're trying to fill out the other team and you know necessarily you know pushing and pressing the way you want to, but. I don't know, maybe it's just a small tweak that we need to say, hey, you know, we're going to come out, we're going to press high, we're going to try to turn them over, trying to get uh, possession back and, you know, try to get some shots on target. I mean, because we, we, we're we we're, we're averaging right around 10 shots a match. So um, we're getting good shots on, on, on goal and, and things, but it just tends to be that it's later in the, in the game rather than, than earlier on. Yeah. So let's talk about personal. Of course, the main man himself should mm -hmm. be available. Of course, it hasn't been confirmed yet for the West Ham game. And that is Wilfred Zaha. The question is, surely, should he play? We've moved on from that to where should he play? Mm -hmm. So for you, T, where do you think Zaha should play? Oh, man, this is a tough one. Because um, I'm, I'm usually not the biggest proponent of Wolf playing center forward, but I think right now with the form that our our our, our two main center forwards are in, um, or what we've seen from them as far as production, um, probably put Wolf up top uh, to start. I mean, maybe it suits him in some ways too because he's not doing a ton of running or tracking back. I mean, being that he has the coming off that type of injury with his groin and things, um, maybe putting him up top is also a good idea because he's not having to do as much running as he would if he was out on the wing. But at this point, I mean, I, I probably will put him up top, to be honest. You put him up top, but do you think Roy will put him up there? Because it was interesting. In the first game when Zaha was available, he was mm -hmm. playing out wide and he was yep. having a brilliant game out wide and putting balls into the box against the Leicester defence. So so do you think Hodgson could keep Are you up there? And put up? Because the thing with Wilf, yes, it didn't work under Vieira, but I've always said this. The reason why it didn't work under Vieira, him playing up front, is because we didn't have the service for him. 
But under Hodgson, I remember, you know, before Hodgson left, he had a few games up front and he scored, you know, quite, yep. quite a few goals there. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it'll be as simple as it didn't work up front under Vieira, so it won't work up front under Hodgson. It just depends on the opportunities that we create for him. But do you think Hodgson will keep him up there? Or do you think he'll put him down the left-hand side and, you know, have Ayu up front? Because Ayu started there for the Wolves game. I mean, the thing about Ayu going to that point, or the thing about Ayu starting up top is obviously the fact that what we're talking about as far as the form of some of our, our central our central forwards maybe maybe Roy isn't um satisfied because when you're talking about team rotation and squad rotation and things if we're rotating up there you would have thought that Mateta would have got the start if we're talking about rotation but Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. but I, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I could have both of being, Edward and Mateta, literally being yeah, the I, fact I, that he yeah. didn't play, being the fact that he didn't start in that situation, um, just shows, uh, I guess, Roy's line of thinking with certain stuff to want to put IU there instead. Um, so then it comes to, I guess, the choice of do you think he wants IU more, or do you think he wants Wolf more in that position, and um. I, I mean, I I really feel I feel like it could be 50-50 with Roy, man. I, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. I think Wolf goes out. I think Wolf goes out wide, though. The reason why I think Wolf goes out wide is because that's how we approach the Leicester game as well. But then again, IU has been performing very good down the left hand side when it's yes. been cut in. Yeah. So, as you said, you know, based on based on the opportunities that um that Wolf has had in limited opportunities in the one game he did play out wide. Mm-hmm. But then again, I think. Either way, I'll be happy because it doesn't mean that Edward or Mateta starting. And I mm-hmm. think we've reached that stage. As long as they're not starting, we should be fine. It doesn't matter if I use up front or Wilf is up front, we can rotate it. Here's here's why. You know what? I'm going to say I think Wilf might be through the middle. And here's why I say that. When Wilf has been on the left and recently when I has been on the left, we've had good play on the wings. So either way, and in my opinion, with how – players are currently playing you put either one of them out there we're going to do well on that left hand side the issue we're having is through the middle and i think if we're talking about what we need from that we need the best finisher possible to be in that position and when it comes between those two wolf is by far the better finisher so that's why i think he might get the nod through the middle because you want to have a better finisher there but that's just my thoughts so, so let's talk about Edward and Mateta. We, we both clearly don't want but either of them to start this game, but Edward has got only one less goal than Wilf. What is it then? What is it? Do you think Roy's going to give up on them as well? I mean, all season long, Mateta just hasn't given me any confidence due to his football abilities. And I don't know if it's, if it's a confidence thing with Edward because he just, like, when you're not confident, of course, it will, it will impact your technique. I, I understand that. But it's not even the fact that Edward is missing you know, clear-cut chances. He's just not being good enough as a footballer. That is my problem. That is my problem. It's not a striker that's low on confidence in front of goals. It's it's a player that's low on confidence. He just doesn't look good. He just doesn't look good for this level. And funny enough, on our TikTok, uh, we posted a uh, clip about Edward and what Jamal said about Edward. And a Celtic fan replied to that saying, oh, it's similar to what happened at Celtic because he used to be lazy there as well. So it's Mm. funny that laziness comment it's coming from Celtic fans as well. So that, that part of his game seems like it's been going on from before. Of course, we wouldn't know as Palace fans because we don't watch Celtic week in, week out. But right. then again, seem like Celtic fans, that's surprising to me. Celtic fan popped up saying, you know, that's similar to what we saw there. Is it a case of then just not good enough? But then again, if they're just not good enough, then how has Edward scored five goals this season? I mean, I think you can be a good finisher. And not be a good striker. Mm. I mean, I yeah. can. I think that's that's obvious. Uh, whether it comes to things like work rate or the ability to hold the ball up uh, and bring other players into to play, your ability to use your head, there's a lot of things that can go into um, being a, a good striker that you may lack and still be a really good finisher. I think when Edward has the time. And when he's able to have the space, he can finish with with pretty much anybody, both feet. I mean, but when it comes to playing in tight spaces, uh, making the right decisions in, 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 in quick succession, uh, holding the ball up and shielding, those are some areas that he struggles. Um, I mean, 
in America, uh, I think watching a guy like him, we would say, yo, he needs to get in the weight room. He's not strong enough. You know what I mean? He, he's not, he's not yeah. physical. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it's just the fact that, yeah, man, he, he's a quality striker. He can score goals when he has the opportunity to shoot the ball, but it's more to it than that. Yeah. You know, um, look, I think and, you know, my Mateta's problem is, is I just too, don't think he's consistent enough to be at this level, as you said. I think exactly. he's a good finisher exactly. if he's given opportunities, mm -hmm. but despite that, he's just not consistent. It's not, it, look, of course, it would be good to, for him to finish and maybe score five goals, but five goal striker that doesn't do anything else that you expect everything to be put into his plate. You're just asking, like, it's just not good enough. And the fact that we're not even mentioning Mateta because I don't know about you, but I think Mateta somehow worse than him. Um, it just shows. The quality that we have, and it's an area that we need to strengthen. And maybe Roy needs to change up, just like with the goalkeeper situation, because we haven't really mentioned mm -hmm. him. Sam Johnson, he made a mistake mm -hmm. and he got dropped. I feel like it's time to you know, rotate things up and fresh things up once again. I know it's only one loss in five, but you know, it, it's it's worth it, especially up front. But not with Johnson, though. What about you? I think Johnson still remains there. I mean, I think Johnson still remains there. It's kind of like the Johnson's um, mistake kind of reminded me of. Butlin against Millwall when he had that one mistake and he came back and, you know, was was really, really strong. Um, that definitely could be it because when you think about – you look at the the entirety of uh, his time, that one mistake is only accounts for probably 10%, if not less, of everything yeah. he's done to this point. So I don't think that that alone should dictate him losing his spot. Um yeah. You know, I guess some of the frustrations you've seen with, with guys like Edward is a little bit different because he's been starting uh, week in and week out, and we haven't seen uh, some of the the production. Um, it's a it's a tough call on a guy like Mateta because he's so enigmatic. Um, sometimes he's he can be lights out, and other times it's just not there. And I think that's what you're talking about when it comes to to being a good striker. It's just consistency. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But at the same time. Mateta hasn't had a lot of chances since Roy has been here either. You know, his minutes have been very low too. Not to but say he hasn't that, rated him before. Remember yeah, was, and, 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 and that's part of I think that's part of it too. Yeah, is the fact that there may be some um, you know, preconceived notions and 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 feelings about him that Roy has carried since uh, his his last time as manager too, which unfortunately works against Mateta in, in, in that situation. But um you know, I, I think for us as a squad, for us as fans, the thing we just want to see is consistency from from that striker position, whether it be bringing other guys into the play, get, getting assists, scoring goals, whatever it is. You just want to see some consistency there. Yeah. Well, let's look at the league table. We're not going to show the graphics because as we're recording this, there's lots of games going on and the scoreline exactly. changing. As exactly. we're just recording this, at the current moment of time, Liverpool have just gone another goal, uh, scored another goal and are, are, and are leading 2-1 against mm -hmm. West Ham. So that's clearly changed a few things there. But as it stands, we'll talk about the league table. Um, Palace still remain 12th. Uh, West Ham currently, they dropped to, they're still 14th. But of course, before there was winning, so there was literally on one point behind us. But now they're back to 34 points. So they're still three points behind us. And Chelsea, they're losing as well. But my general question, of course, relegation is not a massive worry at this point. Mm -hmm. Have you given up? on the 11th spot or is that sort of an objective for you because for me in all honesty right now um i mean we started it very well against roy with you know pushing and getting the wins but i'm mm. not really that fast about 11th anymore i'm just going to be totally honest I i'm not it'll be nice but I i'm kind of slowly entering the stage that i'm i'm locked out of the season you know I I've, I've seen enough of this season yes it'll be good to finish 11th but you know up apart from that 10th that's going because Fulham are picking up more points and and you know, it's just it's just now riding out to the end of the season and trying to pick up as many points as possible, or even picking up draws just to make sure you're safe. But for you, have you lost any hope in terms of eleventh push? Because I think it's still achievable. Yeah, but it's definitely apart achievable. from eleventh, there, apart from eleventh, there isn't another spot like tenth or ninth that we can realistically go for at this stage. So it's like, cool, we can finish eleventh rather than twelfth, and that might help us financially. But how much of a difference is that really going to make? Whereas yeah, before, think... if we if we picked up wins against Everton and against Wolves, then, you know, we're probably right behind Fulham as well. But now the, the gap is separating. Yeah. Um, Manchester City just scored another one there, 3-0. Yeah, up, yeah, yeah, that's why, um, yeah. I, I, think, I think that view <laughs> D, I think that view D really is kind of, you know, person to person 
to be honest with you, depending on who the fan is and things like that. I mean, of course, when we were around that time of getting rid of Patrick Vieira, my, my main thing was, you know, making sure that we do enough to f- far distance ourselves from relegation. So um, I feel like that goal is, is pretty much met at this point. So um, then the auxiliary goal is just to finish as high as you can and, and, and secures um, the, the places and the money, you know. Um, me personally, um, I would love to see us still fighting for 11th just because I personally would love to see us finish above a team like Chelsea. You know what I mean? Um, the fact that, you know, they spent all these hundreds of millions of dollars and going out and gotten all these guys and lo and behold, they're, they're finishing below Palace who are bottom five in, in money spent over the last X amount of years and things like that. So, um, I mean, we're still only two points behind them, and right now it looks like it could be going into the weekend that, that that's not going to change. So, you know, it, it just takes us getting another W for us to to leapfrog them, and then, you know, because they're, they're in the mud, man. They're not playing well at all. So, um, Bro, is that you know, it? But the thing is, Wolves, and you can make the argument, maybe West Ham, but right now they're losing, so that's a positive for us. I'll probably looking at that spot as well. I guess there's going to be a bit of competition and it adds a bit of excitement uh, to the end of the season, but it's not yeah, something I'm know. really fast about now. At the start, I was. It was it was like, cool, let's keep it going. We catch up to Chelsea, maybe Fulham, but it's like, cool, we catch up to Chelsea, but then Fulham, you know, is that really realistic? It's just, it just honestly, it's at this stage, we need to prepare for next season. Um, but quickly, T, let's talk about West Ham. Um, mm-hmm. Recently, they've been, apart from the Liverpool game, which might change as we're talking, they might score mm-hmm. a goal or they might even lose by a heavier margin, but they picked up those they picked up some nice you know results, especially against Bournemouth. They beat them 4-0, uh one in the conference league court finals, 4-1, drew against Arsenal 2-2. They seem like they're picking up, so this won't be an easy game in that regard. Yeah, I think a lot of the, the, the turnaround for them has come with their success in the conference league. Um them playing well, um having success has kind of you know catapulted them into seeing some more success in the league because if you recall, like they were struggling too uh, in the league uh, in a lot of ways, so they're definitely playing a lot better uh, as of right now. But uh, and then Saturday is not going to be a, a easy competition by any means. But I definitely is. I definitely think it's a it's a match that we can get a result from though. Yeah, and 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 talking about some of those players, I think the player that I'm looking out for in this game because it seems like he's um, he's on fine form is uh, Pequeta. Pequeta, uh, of course, we know about Declan Rice and and Ben Rama, but. You know, we can attack their their fullbacks. I think Kufal or Cresswell, whether it, that changes or not. Funny enough, Chelsea, they're losing. So as you're watching this right now, you can tell what part of the what time we're recording this. Chelsea are losing 2-0 now. Brentford scored another goal. So that's uh, Brentford scored um, another one? Okay. Yeah. Mm. We're just talking about 11th. And that's what I'm saying. There's no point in talking about the league table because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, Actually, showing the graphics. We can talk about it, but we can't show the graphics because <laughs> God knows yeah. what it's going to be like, actually. Right. Yeah. So it's 2-0 Brentford, um, which I guess helps our cause there. Uh, but yeah, for for West Ham, Pequeta for me, Ben Rama, of course, Rice. That's that, that's the main players. But Pequeta, if the quarry starts, because I think we've missed the quarry in the Wolves game as well. Not defensively, but in terms of dictating play, because I don't think Luke had a bad game, but he just didn't have a great game either. Especially yeah, you missed you, you, you missed the quarry in a lot of one ways to, to stop. I think Pequeta is going to be one to stop Ben Rama and Mitchell. I think ben and Mitchell should be able to handle it, but it's like. How do you stop Pequeta? Because if you stop him, then I think you got a good chance. Yeah, I think you you, you end up trying to because you know uh, Pakistan plays in in the middle of the pitch, so you know you try to hopefully try to mark him out with a guy like Decore, who definitely could uh can can take him out of the game, uh, in my opinion. Um, so that's going to be a tough that's going to be a tough matchup for for for, for Pakita for sure. Is 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 dealing with uh, Decore, but um, you know Syed Ben Rama's always seems to put in a good performance against us seems like yeah. uh and he he has a, an eye for picking out a, a great pass too so he's definitely going to be dangerous um on the outside too so um it'll, it'll be it'll, it'll be a tough match man but like i said i think we definitely got the players got the tool to to get a good result especially with um possibly the the return of will so yeah, and, and 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 quickly talk about Arsenal. Um, whilst we're talking about the preview, um, the 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 I don't you don't you guys don't have council, but the local I don't know what you lot say, like the local 
district or people mm -hmm. that run the local district. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is they were handing out notice about Arsenal's parade and uh, the preparation for it and all of that. And and this is happening, by the way, another time to smile. Forest 3, Brighton 1. Forest beat Brighton 3 1. So in terms of their European hopes, <laughs> that's that's great as well. That's where yeah. Forest 3 there's a lot of things going on. That's 3 tough. 1, Forest. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, we're, we're Honestly, laughing now. Because Brentford about to step up a little bit. Yeah, we're laughing now because we, you know, we, we can laugh because we're not down there like that. But I mean, that would have been scary for us if it was the likes of Leeds because that's a massive result for Forest, uh, especially for confidence. But enough of Forest talk and Brighton and all them talks. It's just they're going on as we're talking and recording this preview. Um, Palace, I think Eze needs to go in the middle. Uh, we spoke about players. Eze needs to go back in the middle. I think that's going to happen. Yep. And, and you know, I, I don't think I'm focusing on anyone in particular. I think Wilf coming back is going to help us and, and we should have. We should, we should have a boost. We should have a boost overall to the team because um, we rotated a lot of players. And the main thing I'm looking at in this game is is the, the fatigue side and rotator side. I think some of these players need to step up now. The Corre won't, you know, be not allowed to play. If he picks up another yellow card, he won't be suspended because uh, that's now gone. So he's, he's he's free, gay, he's free. And some of these players are rested. Uh, but but for you, the, um, you know, let's move on to the score prediction. How do you see it going? Because West Ham, we talked about it. They've got some good players. They're also performing well recently. They, we're going to be at home. Are you seeing another win for Palace? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be another difficult game? Uh, it's de definitely be a difficult game. I, um, if I'm thinking about things, I'd probably go 1-1 one, one Palace. and 1-1 one, 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 uh, draw, you know. 1-1? One, one. I think it'd be a draw. Yeah, look, I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's fair. I'm going to go for 1-0 no Palace or like 2-0 no Palace. I think we're worth coming back. I could see something like the Leicester game happening. Like, I don't think West Ham are going to come and attack mm. us. They never read that. Another clean sheet time. for, 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 for Sam as well. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll okay. take that. Another clean sheet for Sam. You know, get things going once again um, after after that mistake that he made. And I think it should be 1 0, 2 0 Palace. I, I, I can see us bouncing back in this game with Wolf back, with plays rested. And it's a home mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I I'm confident. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below and your general thoughts of the game. As always, if you have enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to Nomisan Future Video. That's it from me and T. Until next time, up the pad.